guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be planting some trees. We've gotta run down to the garden center and grab a couple that I have tagged. Paul just dug out one of our forest pansy red buds that started to die out last summer. So we planted four big forest pansy red buds. They did beautifully the first year. Last year, they all budded out, I mean, beautiful flowers, and they all leafed out beautifully. There was no sign of stress on any one of them. And then two of them, which I, we still do have one, I'll show you close up. Two of them just started to kind of collapse under the summer heat. It was weird. There was no sign of insect pressure. There was no um, fungal issue. There was no viral. I mean, we couldn't tell what had happened. And then two of the four just looked beautiful and still do. So this right here is where Paul just dug out the old one. We actually had a friend come and try to dig them out because she was gonna try to save them. And they just formed too much of a taproot. I mean, they were so rooted in. That's the other thing, like the root system looked healthy. That looked like they had had no issue rooting in. Uh, so we did try to, to give them a go and save them. They didn't even attempt to try to dig the second one out. So that's the hole right here. And I got to tell you, I'm looking forward to having a vertical again. Um, you know, I just missed that. It's cr kind of crazy. Sometimes, you know, you'll lose something and it doesn't make as big of an impact as some, you know, other things that you'll lose. But we've got a forest pansy here that looks awesome. And get up close on it here. And it's every bit as exposed, you know, to weather and sun and all of that business looks great and here's the other one so yeah it just it's really strange there's a little growth at the top a little bit at the bottom but all of these branches are dead there's no life in them uh, we've already tested all that out so we're not going to attempt to save this one it's too much of a key element out here uh, so we will be i'm going to use the branches though that have leaves on them still and flower arrangement so we'll get you know a little bit of life out of those branches I uh, want I'm ready to do that. And then we will probably put something that gets bigger than this one, wood. You know, it's never fun to lose something, but occasionally when we do, like in this case, I kind of want to put something that gets bigger in the end, a bigger mature size that will be more of a shade tree right here. It's a really good spot for one, I think. Same for this area right here. There's not a lot around it. And that forest pansy, I can't remember that where they top out at, but they don't get enormous. It's like a medium sized tree. So it'll be nice to have something that gets quite a lot bigger. So Aaron is back in the trailer out. I think he's gonna come pick me up and we are gonna head down to the garden center. Ready to load up some trees? Yeah. We're down at the garden center now and there are so many beautiful things here but I did tag two Shade Master honey locusts the other day. They're enormous. What I think we're gonna have to do, Erin, is we're gonna have to get the trees out of here, take them around this way um, so that I can get the forklift right here okay. and then we can pick them up. There's the forklift, let's try it. Oh my gosh, they got a new load of unique stone in. Oh, oh, got a good, nope, trees, trees. Gotta control myself, oh, never easy. Okay guys, we got them strapped in. I think that's enough work for today, don't you think? Hey, I just go. Or do you think that we should go pick out some more things? Do you want some more stuff? Well, I might just run oh, through no. real quick. I just had to stop and show you guys all of these planters. So you might think I use a lot of plants. <laughs> all of these, all of these. Okay, so it starts right here. And there are multiples, like nine per pallet here. They span the whole distance. These are all going to one home, right? One just for one area. So this is really interesting. It's uh, the blue suede shoes, rock and blue suede shoes, salvia, Supertunia snowdrift, yes. and Supertunia mini vista yellow. And these all sink down. They're like little garbage cans or rubber made. Yeah, like garbage cans. Yeah. So there's three that go in each window basket. So this is the center one. And then one on the right and one on the left, it sinks down into a wooden, it's a red, like candy apple red lacquered like um swiss sort of looking home uh -huh. and these just countersink so you won't see the black garbage cans they go down in these 
bright red. And they're, they're wood, but the, the bottoms are metal. They're metal, so, and the garbage cans are drilled, so there's no water that's gonna touch, no water or soil that'll touch the, the beautiful wooden planters. Oh. Yeah. How fun, yeah, so it's all arranged here to where the middle one will have the sweet potato vine and the outer two will have the yellow. And then just imagine those in that bright red window box situation. These are all going to McCall, Idaho to someone's oh, summer home probably. These are all windows <laughs> just on the front of the house. Oh my gosh. And this faces a lake. Oh. So this will be really pretty. Yeah, that yeah. will be gorgeous. Thought you guys might be interested in seeing that. I thought it was just beautiful. I love this combination. All right, guys, it is a new day. Once we got the trees home, it was pretty hot. That, and I kind of wanted to really think through the position of these trees because they do get quite large. They grow 45 feet tall by 35 feet wide. Uh, so you do want to make sure that, you know, you've got them somewhere where they can do that. Uh, also a zone four, hardy to zone four. So we've kind of decided right in this area. Hey, Benjamin, do you want to show us where we thought we would put it? Right there. I think that looks really good. I think so. So in this great big giant flower bed that we kind of formed year before last and haven't really done much with, uh, we do want to start adding some things in. In fact, uh, we did mark where we're going to put a stone pathway through this area. And I think once that's in and once we have a couple of larger trees in here, it will feel, uh, I don't know, it starts giving you that structure and you can kind of go off of that, that hardscape, that stone pathway. You know where you want to position bigger things and smaller things. I think it's going to be really good. The pathway will start right up there by the sidewalk around the house and it will swing uh, actually on this side of the tree kind of by the table and chairs and then it's going to kind of curve through. I don't know if you can see the line right here and then it's going to go out kind of where the gator is right there. So if we position the tree right in here-ish, it'll be far enough away from the path and away from the other trees that are big and far enough away from the maple that it'll have plenty of room to spread out. So we're gonna grab one of these trees and set it in the location where we think we want it. We might shift it a little bit, but other than that, we just gotta dig a hole and get it in the ground. And there it is. I like how tall it is. I do, well, I do too, of course. That's really nice. You guys, this one right over here, that is what we're planting. That is a mature one. I think it's gonna be gorgeous right here. It'll create a nice shady area and it gives us enough room, like about where the gator is, we can do another small evergreen interest um, that has a little bit more size, like medium. Oh, it's gonna look really nice from this direction. And I hope you can see, I kind of went through with my foot. Not very well though. <laughs> and indicated where the path, pathway is gonna be. So it'll go around like that and then out. I think that's great. We can start digging.
Well, it's kind of perched out there all by itself at the moment, but I think it looks awesome. And to know that it's gonna just fill in this area, create shade, and just a really beautiful canopy over the driveway, especially, I'm really excited for that. Such beautiful trees. And see, I've got a hose going on it right now. We did create wells around each one of these just until we have a chance to run our drip. Uh, it's just easier to give them a deep soak because it holds the water instead of the water running off. Drip typically runs so slow uh, that the ground has a chance to absorb it before it runs off. But here's a view from this side right here. Oh, it looks so great. And of course, the view toward the Hartley. It's kind of fun because sometimes it just takes that one thing, planting that one tree or the one shrub or putting in a walkway just to motivate you and spur you on to start developing the area more and working on it, adding more things. Uh, we did kind of walk out where we wanted the grass pathway. We only will know on one end though until we finish our project next month how the other end will, will end up. So we won't probably get our grass pathway. It might be this year, but it, if it is, it'll be later, like late summer fall. And if we come in about here, we'll have plenty of room to do a flower bed in here. It'll be plenty deep enough. Uh, we will make sure though that it does, we'll continue to have access to the backside of our barn, uh, but the main part will come around and it will kind of go right down the center of this area so that we have enough space on either side to do some bigger things. And it isn't our goal to do like a secret garden feel, but I think in the end, this area back here, at least this half, will be a little bit more shrouded and hopefully shady and sort of secret. Like you'll be able to see some views from the Hartley Inn, uh, but it won't be blocked off completely, I guess. And then once the grass pathway gets about here, we just aren't sure until we're done with our project how it's going to go out. It'll probably go out about where the truck is, roughly. Anyway, it was really nice to just get those trees in the ground and really just to do it in the morning when it's still semi-cool. It's supposed to be, I think, close to 90 today. So now that that project is done, Aaron already took off. He's gonna be mowing the grass. He got a little bit of it done last night he's going to finish up today while I plant those great big urns. I think they're called the gallery scroll urns from Unique Stone. We have them flanking our dumpster of all places. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get those planted up right now. Here we are, not the most picturesque spot on our entire property, but I thought by putting these massive urns, which are gorgeous, and filling them up with color that it might help just kind of dress up this little enclosure area. Aren't these pretty? The detail is just beautiful. I did test the drip the other day, so it runs right off of the Arborvita drip line, which we run every other day. I am gonna have to, I brought some more um, tubing and such and couplers out here because I need to extend that and fill them with fresh soil. But check these out, they are pretty good size. They're really tall. Um, so this was actually the best spot to put these, I thought, because we didn't have another area in the garden that required such massive scale sort of containers. I'm really excited about this mix of plants though. So I'm gonna try three brand new annuals for next year, which we do have a representation of each one of these in the hay racks. Uh, but this one, I have to find the tags. I think this is Sweet Sangria. Mini Vista, yep, Sweet Sangria. And this is a Supertunia Hoopla Vivid Orchid. And then this is the Pink Cashmere Superbina. So I thought we could put those around the blue mohawk. This isn't a new one, uh, but I thought that this kind of cool toned grass would be pretty. And then depending on how things go, I might tuck some of these in as kind of a filler layer, the diamond frost euphorbia. So just a very cool toned mix, which out here it gets pretty hot and you know, it can kind of look yellowy orange when it's really hot. I don't know why that is. Um, it just kind of has like a general cast. So if I use any warm colors, that's why I lean toward cool colors as a whole. Uh, but out here in particular, because there's not a whole lot of other things around them, I think using the cool tones will be just visually cooling, I hope. So this is what I've got for drip supplies. We've got our quarter inch, just solid poly, which I need to extend the lines, I think, in both of those containers. And then we will connect some of this quarter inch drip tubing that has emitter holes every nine inches. And I'm gonna probably shoot for, let's see. Oh, I'll probably make sure there's about six or seven emitters in the pots to start with. And that can be adjusted depending on how quickly they dry out or if they stay wet for too long. I mean, given the fact that this drip system, like this zone is only gonna be running every other day, I'm kind of erring on a little bit extra in the emitter department. And if we need to scale it down, we can. But so far we ran our uh, drip to the persimmon urns out in the South Garden. 
and those have only been running every other day, even with wind. And we haven't had to, you know temperatures even in the high 90s yet. So it might be that we need to add some more emitters once it gets really hot. But so far, those are doing great. All right, let's get this done. Okay, so this one I don't have to do quite as much work to because the leader line comes up high enough. You do want to make sure that you've got enough flex or enough length in that line to where it can lay against the side and have soil push it down because that will want to take the tubing down in the container a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is just clip this off right below the emitter. And this is last year's drip. It's all plugged up from hard water. If you look close at it, you can see all the white crust and all the holes. And then I'll put my new coupler in that line. And then I've cut, I've cut my uh, drip tubing with the seven emitters in it. So we'll attach that like so, and then you gotta make sure to put your plug in there. So we're not blowing water everywhere. Perfect, that one's all set up and good to go. I'm gonna flop that over the side and go do the other one. Okay, so this one is gonna require a little bit more tubing, just the solid tubing to be added because it's a little too short. So I've brought over a couple of quarter inch couplers. We'll put one in. And then I've got a, just a short line of the solid to add to it. We have a little bit more flexibility there. So that way when the soil pushes it down, we've got plenty to work with up here. Put my next quarter inch coupler in. Like so. Then our drip tubing. And our plug. Perfect, good to go. Now soil. Okay, so the grass goes in first and this blue mohawk, it only grows about two to three feet tall and um, it spreads out, I wouldn't say just about as much, but it's not like a super bulky grass. It plays really well with others. It doesn't crowd each other out. It'll just kind of like work its way through the canopy of the other plants. I'm roughing up the roots on this one just a little bit. Don't have to do that on many, mostly grasses and probably the super venus. All right, so then I'm gonna go in with my annuals around the edge and I'm using two of each variety just putting them on opposite sides of the container. Okay, so this is what it looks like without the diamond frost in there, which is a very clean, really nice look, but I kind of want a little extra oomph in there. So I'm gonna tuck these in, and these are great because they're just kind of like this one, they're not gonna take over, they're just gonna be in a nice accent plant. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna take our drip line and we're just gonna work it around all of these plants. There's the first one done. Now the second. And there's the second one done. I think they look really pretty. So they'll pretty much look the same from all directions and they're gonna get sun all day long because you know sun comes up over here and it goes down over here there's no protection at all for these and they'll get the brunt of the wind too so it'll be a really good test actually you know to see how all of these do now i love this as i was planting this whole container like i could get rid of this one and this one and i could just have that soft pink the white and the blue grass and i think that would be a really sweet blend but I think that having the bright, you know, clearly having the brighter pinks in here will make the whole thing stand out. I'm really excited to see how they grow together. And here's a backed up look. So this is kind of our before shot. 
and we'll be able to give you some really fun updates. I think in even just one month, we will see some major growth and big color out here. And you guys, that is gonna do it for today's projects. I do think that Aaron is going to have a camera out when he mows, so I think we'll leave you with that as our ending, our parting shot. Um, it's always kind of peaceful to watch that. It's kind of mesmerizing like watching fire. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a great day and we will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.